Hi, this is Greg Hawks from The Cars, and you're listening to Night Thoughts, the longest-running Cars podcast ever. sunshine and rainbows welcome to night thoughts the cars podcast episode 50 or as the romans would say episode l <laughs> or as vargas would say el episodio it's 50 <laughs> and it's so sexy <laughs> i'm dave and guess what spring break has begun Woo-hoo. And joining me is my partner in crime. If I go down, by golly, she's going down with me. Donna Sweet Purple June. How's it going, Donna? Hey, it's going really good. Fantastic. I'm Fantastic. Super hyper. I am super yeah. hyper. Yep. And we also have a special guest tonight, man of many talents in the music industry. And I might add, his equipment is too high end for our podcast. I'll just <laughs> throw that in there. Um and also, I will say the guy voted probably one of the hardest last names to pronounce for some reason, <laughs> Mr. Eric Barrow. Eric, how are you doing? I'm doing great. It's uh, <laughs> to be here. Hey, Eric, how many ways can people butcher your last name? Uh, probably about as many <laughs> as Okasek. Okasek. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you mean Okasek. If, oh, if yeah. You, <laughs> If you remember, I told you originally when I contacted you about being on the pod, is it Barrio or is it Barrio? And, and then you, helped me. you said it's Barrow, like wheelbarrow. Exactly. Which is so helpful. So now I picture the wheelbarrow whenever whenever I talk to you. There you go. That's, that's how I get people to yeah. memorize it. And I and I don't know if you if you heard our other episode with Brett Basil. People always call him Brett Basil. So I'm thinking like you and Brett should get together, collaborate on an album so you could be Barrio and Basil. <laughs> no one would I'm get sure, that I'm, one. Sure, I'm sure Tony and Basil gets that as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no kidding. All right. Well, it's great to have you aboard, my friend. We, we are you. going to get to the news. And Donna, I don't want to freak you out, but okay. here's the first part of my news tonight. Okay. Uh, I swear to you, true story, okay? Okay. Last night, I had a dream about Benjamin Orr. Okay. Okay? And, and you know what this means. You know, he really visited me. You know, so says everybody. <laughs> In the dream, I'm, I'm sitting watching TV, and there's this political advertisement commercial on TV. Ben is running for office. I don't know what he was running for office of and never said, um, but he was and it was like, you know, him in the factories, you know, greeting the people and that kind of stuff. And guess what his slogan was? <laughs> Come on, guess. What was his I, slogan? I'm totally serious. Oh, I'm so, I'm so impressed with my sleeping brain. I couldn't his even sl- guess. His slogan was bye bye or bye by taxes. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Bye. Bye, Texas. <laughs> and I woke up and I'm like, what the hell? What? <laughs> Too much politics in my life? Oh, my gosh. Well, no. Cars, I have no idea. Dave, this is a message to you. Uh, yes. You need to I run. Do. You need to run for office in his stead. That's what he's telling you. By uh, taxes. Yeah. Hey, why not? You're in. You're so in. Yeah. He's paving the way. Yeah. So, hey, true story, folks. Even <laughs> Dave dreams about Ben Orr. You know, what can I do? So <laughs> the other thing I wanted to do was we know that Rhino listens to our podcast <laughs> every time. And we want to give a big shout out to Rhino Records 
for making Donna's dreams come true. Oh, my gosh. Yes. More and than a it, shout out. I want to say to Rhino, I love you, Rhino. Woo! Yeah. Whoever, whoever runs the Rhino Twitter is awesome. They've never bothered to tell me their name, you know, and I conversed with them or whatever. But as the story goes, I told a couple podcasts ago, um, you know, I'd be getting so much heat from Donna over the panorama felt turntable cover yes. that, hey, you want to do something nice for my for my buddy Donna? You can find one of those turntable covers and send it to her and heard nothing. And I thought, oh, well, you know, that's the way it goes. And then just out of the blue, I get a message on Twitter. Are, do you mean these? And they had a picture of it. And I'm like, yes, send it. <laughs> and they did. They sent Donna so, one. They sent me one. And so it's pretty awesome. cool. Oh, yeah. my gosh. You, uh, you, I smiled for probably three days straight when I found out that that was on the way. I could not believe it. That yeah. is so cool. Uh, and I look at it every day. I love it. I look at it every single day. Okay. Do you do you let it spin and like feel the feel the felt? Well, I don't want to get goes... my my finger my oily fingerprints all over it. No. <laughs> Dave, Are you they're... gonna play a record on it? Because that's what it's for. I know. Well, I played the Panorama album on it, and that's it so far. Gotcha. gotcha. <laughs> I had to do the Panorama album. Oh, it's glorious. It is. Eric, glorious. Do, do you have a do you have a felt cover on your turntable? Uh, with the cars on it, absolutely no. not. I'm very jealous about that. But but just <laughs> but just a a felt cover. Is this something I, I, that a vinyl I, person needs? Yeah, I guess I have a a dark black one. Yes, but. It may as well not be there at this point. Now that I've heard about the <laughs> car's slip cover. Yeah. Well, hey, yeah. Rhino listens, so hey, get get our buddy Eric uh, one one of those panorama covers, Rhino. There now, are you? Isn't there? Is there a panorama picture disc, or is that? Or am I thinking of the candy Um Well, I don't know. If, not not with that. Not with that. Um, not with that artwork. That picture right? on it. Yeah. Well, it's, okay. We're, I don't know about that. Okay, because, of course, you know at the beginning of the Touch and Go video, they play what looks like a picture disc on a turntable. Yes. And then it was kind of, then I heard, well, no, that was just a mock-up. That was fake. And, but then I heard that uh, it actually exists. A small number of them were made. And, uh, hmm. yeah, so so I'm not, I'm not sure. I think that warrants uh, further research. Wow. Yeah, because now that... Dave, I'll get in all sorts of fights with you over that if you want to hunt it down for me. <laughs> I know. Well, for, from what from what Craig, uh, Craig said on Facebook, those those uh, felt covers were supposed to be like an extra in the Panorama Extended Edition. Yeah, and I wonder where that. Said. I wonder where he heard that, or I mean, I don't know. Yeah, that was intriguing. No yeah, but you know, hey, everybody listens to our podcast. Well, yeah. I'd like to think the surviving members of the band listen to our our podcast, right? Uh, well, yes, I would like to think that too. Yeah, like I'm sure Rick Lick listens to it while he's like jogging in New York. <laughs> while he's making meatloaf and <laughs> yeah, he does his morning the... run. Yeah, this is. <laughs> yeah. Could you imagine? <laughs> You know, Greg listens. He's been on, so he listens. He's got to listen now. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he listens to it still. I, I bet he does. He I might. bet he's got his, those those earplugs he has in while he's playing for Rundgren. You know I what? bet he's listening to us. <laughs> while he's playing. You know while what? Actually, to... I bet on the tour bus, he's got the whole band listening to it. <laughs> Prairie Prince, Todd, they're all tuning in just laughing. They think I it's bet awesome. you they are. They are. I'm they sure are. they are. Todd's wondering Elliot? how he can get on here. I'm sure he is. <laughs> Elliot probably listens to us while he's at Dodger games. Maybe, maybe. Right yeah, where he's shopping we for can, shoes. We can. <laughs> <laughs> while he's shopping for shoes. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, that's, Elliot, I'm telling you, Elliot, he's, he's got he's got him in. People are thinking he's listening to the game on the radio. No, he's listening to us when mm -hmm. he's at those Dodger games. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now, the real yeah. question, though, is what are their reactions? Are they laughing their heads off or are, are they going, those oh, son of a, oh, I can't believe <laughs> Nine fingers? You think I, I have know. nine fingers? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, hard to say. Uh, well, hey. When we get Eric, them on, this we'll ask them. This may not be the place you want to be right now. <laughs> oh, the band's right. listening. 
<laughs> That's right. Well, yeah. we're hoping that Eric can put in a good word for us because he's got some, he's got furniture. He's got connections. <laughs> <laughs> he does. That is for sure. All right. So, Donnie, you have some some news. I do have a little some bit of news. Big news. Yeah. Just before, like five minutes before we connected on Skype, um, I posted the official announcement. We have uh, made the agreement and got all the arrangements in place for the Boston book event for Let's Go, Benjamin Orr in the Cars by Joe Milliken. It will be June 22nd at Nine Wallace, which is actually in Beverly, just outside of Boston. Is and that the address? Nine Wallace? I believe it is also the address, yes, but that's the name of the venue. It's called Nine Wallace. Oh, Nine Wallace. Okay. Yeah, and so we're going to do similar to what we did in Cleveland. Moving in Stereo is going to be there. <gasps> playing a Again? Concert. Yes, they're playing a oh. show for us. And, um, Holy yeah, Lord. exciting stuff. So um, more details coming. We're hoping to post those on Monday, hoping that tickets will go on sale here pretty soon. And, um, yeah, it's kind of a small venue, so you're going to want to uh, get your tickets fast and... Well, exciting stuff very cool yeah <laughs> all right well the last bit of news i have is i noticed that rick and paulina's 15 million dollar mansion still on the market ah yes nobody's bought it yet what's you, taking so long did you put in a bid i have not put in a bid <laughs> Wait, what? i'm just but wondering why it's taking to. so long to sell oh. what's wrong with that house something's got to be wrong with it is it haunted could be haunted could be still, you know, in stuck in the 80s. Maybe it's, you know, pastel colored rooms, shag carpet, hmm. <laughs> shag, shag carpet in the bathrooms. Ew. You know, har- <laughs> harvest gold appliances, you know, stuff like that. Hmm. 12-foot showers for Rick. <laughs> Everything's odd shaped. The cupboards you know, are really high. You know, the cabinets are. Yeah. <laughs> no one can reach Probably. them. Probably those emergency pleasure droids all over the place. You know? <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> you know? Dude, you know, you, you have to remove those. People don't want those built in. <laughs> Not going to sell that way. I don't know. I just don't well. <laughs> You know, just waiting around. All right. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. So so that is our news, but let's let's get to Eric. Yes. Eric's patiently waiting for us. Um <laughs> He's not doing as many courtesy laughs as he should be doing. <laughs> You're gonna have to up the up the uh, quantity there, bud. Out out of fairness, we don't have an applause I was, sign. I was uh, trying to stay quiet through your news. So. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Well, just to just to give our our listeners who are not familiar with Eric um, a little background, um, I I can tell you that the the first well actually I had kind of one of those weird deals where uh, I, I finally made a connection because, um, you know, I, I knew about the cautions, you know, many years ago mm-hmm. when the first EP came out and, and that was a big deal to the, you know, to cars fans. And then when we get up to the turbo charge things that we got into and, and uh, Dave Jesco told me about Eric and then I finally went, Okay, I know that name. Where do I know that name from? And then I finally put two and two together. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, okay, I get it now. So that's that's where mine came from. But um, you know, Eric, Eric was. Would, are you a founding member, Eric? Uh, of the Russians? Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, the the band started with uh, myself and another guy from uh, who I met at Berkeley, who became a, a great friend of mine, and uh, we were both both fans of the cars. Um, gotcha. So I can honestly say the cautions never would have existed without our mutual love of the cars for sure. Yeah. Nice. So, so, you know, for our listeners, Eric is, uh, uh, was a, a member of the cautions, um, a very, um, heavily cars influenced band. Um, he's since gone on to, um, d- do a solo career and he also has, ties to a uh, turbo charge, the unauthorized story of the cars. So that's why we're having Eric on tonight to talk about all those different things. Plus he has a new album coming out and we want to promote that as well. Yeah. So um, let's just, let's just start with uh, some, some more background things, Eric. You had uh, <clears throat> one of the things that, that you brought up to us was um, a, a piece that you wrote for tales from the rock and roll highway. 
by Marley Brandt. And in, in the kind of you kind of put out there how you got involved and how you discovered the cars. Can you kind of like, you know, share that with us? Uh, yeah, I um, I think, you know, my ma- my memory is hazy on this, but um, uh, I believe I got in touch with uh, the, the author, Marley Brandt, of this book um, in the MySpace days. I believe she found me on MySpace. But uh, somehow or other, we got we got chit chatting and she was writing a book. It's the book is mostly um, stories of of uh, life on the road from famous musicians. But there's a section in the book sort of about uh, fans and hero worship and that sort of thing. And that's where I fit in because I was kind of, you know, the cautions were uh, a regional a regional sensation. And so um, but what I, what I what I had to the, the story that I had to tell was, you know, how I got into being a musician in the first place. And it all kind of started with my infatuation, deep infatuation with the cars when I starting at age 12. So that's what I wrote about in the book. Um, so I, I got like four or five pages in the book to write a story about, you know, what the car's influence meant to me and, and how it led me on a path to becoming a, a songwriter as a career. Yeah. And I, I love how, um, I'm sorry, Dana. I love how you discovered the cars from dumpster diving. I mean, not dumpster diving <laughs> <laughs> for finding, for finding a, a cassette in the trash. Yeah. There was a, I was on the playground in, in the, uh, let's say, sixth grade, and there were, you know, in my in my small town, um, the playground of, of the grade school was sort of the uh, druggy hangout at night. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there were all these like late teenagers, like just smoking pot in the in the on the school grounds um, of the grade school. So one day I found a cassette with all the tape sort of pulled out of it, like, you know, it, it had jammed up in somebody's boom box and they just threw it away. And as a 12 year old, I was like, well, what could be on this? You know, so I, I rescued the tape and like used the, the pencil eraser to wind it all back in. <laughs> that is so nostalgic. <laughs> I love and it. I got this, and I got this like mix tape of everything taped off the radio. But on that tape were two car songs. Um, it was definitely Good Times Roll, and I think it was Best Friend's Girl. And those like those two songs in particular like changed my life, and <laughs> I was I was like on a new course from then on. Like um, <clears throat> I had done piano lessons from like six age six to twelve, but I wasn't that into it until 12 when I discovered the cars and then like all I would do is bring in songbooks by the cars to my piano teacher. And I was like, I need to learn every one of these. Keyboard <laughs> solos <back."> yeah. <laughs> so that's how it all started. Let's me. face it. You were a pretty cool kid. That's all oh, I can say. You. That's You're awesome. a cool kid. <laughs> so, and, and that, and that led you to actually going to Berkeley college of music. I mean, that was Elliot went Elliot and Greg both attended there, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. And my 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 piano teacher was a Berkeley grad. So that was one thing. But the thing that really made me want to go there was when I found out that like is in particular, Greg Hawks had gone there. I was like, okay, that's what I need to do. (laughs) You know, that's the next step in the evolution is I need to go there. And it was a wonderful experience. Like Berkeley is, is, you know, for, for a kid coming out of high school with like in a small town with like a few decent musicians in, in your school to go to a college where everyone is talking about music 24 hours a day. It was just an amazing experience, you know? That's awesome. Yeah. So, so from, from the point in time that, that you, finished Berkeley, how how much time went past before the, the cautions evolved? Um, I think there were about four years from graduating college 
I played in another band with the my co my co songwriter in the Cautions. Uh, we played in we played in a band called January for about four years. Um, I joined as a bass player when their bass player quit, and then when that band broke up. I, I sat down with my friend Jeff, uh, Jeff Keglarkin, and, and we were like, okay, the, the the previous band was sort of shoegaze, like sort of smashing, smashing pumpkins type music. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I really want to start a band that's more like the Cars, Weezer, Fountains of Wayne, Elvis Costello, but definitely Cars influenced. And he was like, that's, you know, that's great for me. So we started the new band, The Cautions, at that point. So yeah. it was, it's about 1999 or so. And, and I can, Don, I'm sorry, I'm really cutting you off a lot tonight. That's okay, go um, for it. I'm just so excited. I know, you're like me with Judith. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but the, I, you know, I, I remember when when the Fanorama first got wind of The Cautions, it, it, it was my perception that, that The Cautions were a Cars tribute band, and I don't know why. That's just what popped into my head. But it wasn't until, um, you know, we got uh, when Coffee Shop Girl started making the rounds that you realized that oh, okay, this is you know this is their own thing, and that that song was huge um, in the fan for the record, of people. For, for the record, I have no no uh, inkling of any any Cars fans like actually having car- the cautions on the radar. So that's great to hear. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was, um, and it was one of those situations where probably, probably back, um, when we had the frozen fire email list going on, um, in the, you know, in the early two thousands, so forth people, Hey, I remember that. Have you got-? And, you know, th- and that's the same way I found out about fountains of Wayne. Um, oh. you know, people said, Hey, have you heard this band? Um, death ray was another one. Hey, have you heard this band? They they've got this Cars oh, yeah. vibe to them. I, so, I actually uh, opened up for Death Ray one time. Oh, did you? They're awesome. Yeah. They're awesome. They're great. Um, so, on the w- w- you you release the EP for the Cautions um, on there, and and I, I know it was available in CD at first, correct? Yes. Yeah, I don't think, and 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 you can't get it on CD any longer, but you can get it digitally. Okay, I think I think you can get it on CD still from CD Baby. Um, Seriously? Oh, yeah, I'm on that. And if you and if you can't, it's my fault. Like I I, I still have I still have some CDs. So <laughs> if you order it, I will I will ship it to CD Baby, and you'll you'll eventually receive it. Okay, cool. Can I ask a quick question? Sure. I uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, you can, Donna. I'm sorry. No, please don't apologize. Um, so you mentioned that you jumped in as a bass player. What? And so, and I know you're accomplished on the keyboard. So, is that? Do you have other instruments that you can play? Or those? Oh yeah, I play a lot of stuff. I play guitar, bass, um, all all forms of keyboards, um, ukulele. I play a little <laughs> bit of drums. So just about. It really, it came out of like needing to, you know, like needing to record things when people weren't available. I would just learn new instruments do you, <laughs> because it was easier. Do you play the slide whistle? Yeah, Greg uh, Hawks plays the slide whistle. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I feel like I can. Yeah. I'm yes. <laughs> I feel like I can. <laughs> I'm pretty sure in the early days, Greg Hawks did like a whole slide whistle solo. You know, and the rest of the guys go back and get drinks and towel off, and Greg would be out there doing a slide whistle. Can I, can I just say that uh, I'm in touch with your world. Every time I see a live performance of that, it is just I, – I, 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 I'm never, like, disappointed with the skill of Greg Hawks, like no. how many yeah. things he can pull off in one song. It's amazing. Yeah. I think he said in that interview, that last interview that the band had together – that um, that that song performed live was supposed to be as much a visual thing and watching him yeah. as it was. So, yeah. He's the, he's the star of that song for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Without a doubt. Yeah. What's Eric, do you know what the name of that thing is that he twirls around that makes that song or that oh, sound? 
Yeah. Um, Cause I want to learn to play that. I want to say that's a ratchet or something. A like ratchet. That. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> there might be a more technical name, but I, I, I remember playing with that in, in like high school jazz band. Really? Awesome. <laughs> I'm going to go with ratchet. Yeah. <laughs> Final answer. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, coffee shop girl, you know, being, being the song that it is, I, I just got to tell you, since I have the chance to tell you this, you know, personally, that any song that has Juan Valdez mentioned in it is a winner in my book. <laughs> oh, and Biscotti. Yeah, I, I do have to give credit to my <clears throat> my my co-songwriter uh, on that song. Uh, he wrote that song. And his name is Jeff Taglarkin, and he's he's brilliant. He's he's really really clever. Yeah, so, and that's, yeah. That's that's the kind of thing that. The, the, where the cautions remind me of Fountains of Wayne, those kinds of lyrics that, yeah. that are just so off the wall that, uh, you know, it just makes the song more interesting and, and uh, fun to listen to. Mm -hmm. They're both great songwriters. The, the Cars and, and Fountains of Wayne were such huge influences on us and, like, just the cleverness of the lyrics. I, I'm a big... I'm a big lyric person. I can't, I can't get behind a song until I know that there's good lyrics, you know, mm. it, um, and, you know, certainly, certainly Rick Ocasek has that talent and certainly Fountains of Wayne, you know, they really get it as well. So nice. I'm, I'm a big fan of the craft of songwriting. And the, so, so that EP had six songs on it. Um, original. Yeah. It's six mm -hmm. songs on it. The, the the other song that I really like is out of print, which I think is the is one of the best breakup songs <laughs> I've ever heard in my life. It's, <laughs> Thank you. And and the, when the the line about my fucking vinyl um, comes through there <laughs> with me, it was my CDs. When it, when I got divorced the first time, she took all my car CDs. And so yeah. that's that's what that reminds me of. It's like, yeah, I just had to take them, didn't you? <laughs> the uh, the fun thing about that song is I I all of the records that I mentioned in the in the bridge of that song uh, are are records that I actually owned. So <laughs> so you're, you're getting a glimpse into my personal record collection. Yeah. And and the Hello Kitty this and Hello Kitty that, <laughs> which is just I just love it love it. Nice. So from from the. Um, from the EP, and then a few years later, then then you really release um, proceed with the cautions, which was the, um, I mean, holy moly, talk about an album that has um, your money's worth with um, amount of songs, <laughs> has like fifteen <laughs> songs on that baby. If I could go back in time, I would make an album with way less songs because <laughs> it was just too many. <laughs> I mean, no one. There were, I think, what, what were there, 16 songs or 15 well, or 16? Well, the, the weird thing about it is is that, okay, the, the CD that, that I have, um, it, you know, it lists 15 songs, but then you've got that hidden track, which I love hidden tracks. Um, so it actually comes up as 17 tracks, but the 16th track is just blank, and then, boom, you get the live coffee shop girl. Oh, I have a really, really funny story about that blank track. Um, back when back when it was on iTunes, people bought that that track separately. Just blank. <laughs> they, they, they paid a dollar and they bought a, a track of silence. It wasn't like they bought the album; they bought the single. Yeah. <laughs> and I felt so bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> well, those, those cautions are really shy <laughs> that, that blank track I don't know I think they need to turn up their mics a little or something <laughs> something I don't know what are they, what are they playing air guitar in that or what what's going on <laughs> air guitar it's instrumental yeah. the, the, the funny it's thing now, little space yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it yeah, because it was on that album listed on iTunes or on Amazon does show um, that you know that there is the, the blank and then Coffee Shop Girl Live. So you know when, when I originally got the CD and and I'm a person that plugs in a CD and I'll just listen to it over and over in my car for a week, couple weeks, 
And so, you know, when it got to that point and it just kind of goes blank, I didn't really think anything of it. And all of a sudden, boom, there's there's that extra track of uh, Coffee Shop Girl Live. So that's like a you know big, pleasant surprise. I love those kind of things. Great. That was the intention. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't mean to make money off the off the track of Blaine Stage. <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, Rick Ocasek has a hidden track on, I'm thinking, Quick Change World. Um, um, and he's got the, the little uh, bit of tele- called Telephone again. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. And then the only other one I can remember is The Clash. I can't remember what album. Um, I made with Stand By Your Man was a hidden track on their album. Hmm. But those those are just it just in my experience. It's always just such a cool thing to think that an album's over and then all of a sudden boom, something pops up and you're like, What's going on? you know? <laughs> so on on the on the proceed with the cautions, um, there's fifteen songs and I've already told you that um one of my favorite songs on the album is I Keep Seeing You. Oh, okay. Uh, just love that song. It's got so many great elements to it. And we're, we're going to be playing different uh, tracks from Erica throughout this podcast. So that would be one that we want to play. Yes, definitely. So, Donna, can you cue that up? Here we go. To pretend that we could still be just friends You said it's done, this is the end Boston is such a small town That I see you around All the places we used to be There you are
right, that was I Keep Seeing You by The Cautions from their album Proceed with The Cautions. And I love that song, too. I think it's so clever. The other one that I that I uh, like is Tattoo on Your Belly. Oh. Because it reminds me of you, Donna. That, <laughs> you know, that big <laughs> tattoo. <laughs> all right, all right. Eric, is that... Um, is, uh, it sounds to me like a lot of your songs are autobiographical. Are they? It was I Keep Seeing You based on a real experience? Oh, um, well, I can tell you for sure that... Um, so my uh, co-songwriter, Jeff, and I were, you know, we would mostly write songs separately as a sort of Lennon-McCartney kind of a team. Okay. But but Jeff frequently would raid my personal life for songs. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy. So, so uh, Coffee Shop Girl and Tattoo on Your Belly were both the case where Jeff was, like, telling my business <laughs> in songs. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> After I told him some stuff. <laughs> so <laughs> so in, in both of those cases, yeah. That's the um out of print was all me, but um but yeah, Jeff Jeff would uh sometimes make up stories about me. And sometimes they wouldn't be, but uh, those so, two are in particular. What about I keep seeing you? Is there really a guy named Ray that works at the at Starbucks? Uh I think that was autobiographical to Jeff. Oh, okay. Um, he had <laughs> He, as as I remember, he had a uh, he had a girl in high school that he was interested in that it, that went on to be a catalog model of some sort. I forget what magazine it was, but um, Sears. <laughs> no, it wasn't Sears. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, it was something. Uh, I don't know if it's Victoria's Secret or something like along those lines, but um, yeah, so wow. that's where that came from. I see. What about uh, hard math? Hard math was a yeah. breakup that I went through. Yeah, and, uh, that was autobiograph autobiographical. Yeah, yeah. and I it also, that. you know, there's a subtext to that too. That that was the year that my grandmother passed away, and she was kind of my best friend in life. And so I remember I put put in 2002, and that was more in reference yeah. to my grandmother. Yeah, uh, I, and I was going to say, I love that line, 2002 equals a year without you. Yeah. Love yeah. that line. That, that was a bit of uh, two stories at once, yeah. Oh. Wow. But see, and this, this is what we like is getting the, the kind of the behind the scenes, you know, of songs. and, and But as, as we've said before, um, with Rick's music, and I think Brett Bassel brought this up too. You know, once you listen to a song, it's really yours how you interpret it. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, and there's lots of songs that that connect with me, um, and probably on a different level than you know you probably ever intended for it to be. Yeah, and I love that about Rick that he, you know, he's he's willing to like let people make their own, you know, put their own stamp on e each song. And, and just to let it be what it is for each person. Yeah. I think that's great. Yeah. So how long how long were the cautions together? Um, I'd say from ninety nine to two thousand six. So I guess about seven years. Yeah. Okay. And then you guys just decided to to venture off into different areas. Yeah. There there was like no particular breakup. It was just that um, things had run their course and uh, everyone were. We're all still great friends. and There's no enemies in the band at all. So um, I just, you know, I just wanted to do a lot of new material, and I don't think there's a lot of enthusiasm to keep going as the caution. So I just started putting out solo records at that point. Right. <clears throat> Have you guys ever discussed, you know, doing kind of a um, some reunion gigs and those kinds of things? We would love to, but our drummer who is like really a big part of our band um, moved to New Jersey. So um, there's been talks like where, you know, he's, he's, he's considering coming up for a long enough stay that we can like do some Boston re reunion shows, but hasn't happened yet, but I'm hoping it will in the next few years. Yeah. That'd be re really cool. And I know a lot of the caution songs are on YouTube um, along with yeah. a lot of your solo stuff. So, your first solo LP came out in 2013. Correct. So in between the cautions and your first solo LP, 
is when you came to uh, work with the Turbocharged movie, which, of course, because yes. that was like in 2008 or so. Now, OK, uh, Dave, before you jump to that, were you going to mention Substitution Mass Confusion? Oh, yes. Substitution Mass Confusion. Yeah, let's talk about that. Because we love that album. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so that came out. Substitution Mass Confusion came out in 2005, I think. 2005, yeah. Right, and the Cautions uh, contributed a cover of Night Spots, which rocks. Thank you. I always felt that song, like, I, I loved that song immensely, but it, it felt like it was, it didn't have, like, some of the higher energy of some of the Cars songs. And I, I just had it in my head that like I could make a heavier version of it mm -hmm. that would, that would do the, do justice to the, to the energy that it should have maybe. Yeah. It's great. Uh, it's great. I, I love the version as it is, of course, but um, I, I just wanted to make a heavier version to see, you know, how that would be. Yeah. How did you guys come about working on that project? Um, I have a good, a good friend named, uh, he goes by Blue. His name is uh, Blue Macaulay, and um, he's he's um, he's currently in L.A. and he has a, a a great career as a songwriter to a lot of Disney artists as well as uh, as well as other people. He um, he, he was a friend uh, from Berkeley, the my days at Berkeley, mm -hmm. and he's just an amazing songwriter and. Um, he was invited to be on Substitution Mass Confusion first. And I think he knew that I was like the penultimate Cars fan that he knew. <laughs> and he, so once he got invited, he was like, look, I'm going to tell you that I'm on this. I'm going to be on this Cars tribute CD. And I, I know you should be on there, too. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and he's like, I'm going to campaign for you for you to also be on the CD, but all the, all the hits have already been taken <laughs> by other people. <laughs> yeah. So, and the deadline for this whole project is in like 12 days. So <laughs> you, you need to pick an obscure car song <laughs> and you have 12 <laughs> days to make a recording. Yeah, arrange um, it and record it. Yeah. And then we can see if they, if they like it. So, so I got to work immediately and I picked night spots because it wasn't taken at that point. And, uh, fortunately it was accepted. So That's awesome. we, we snuck in there and, uh, and then of course the, the CD release was in Boston and only so many of the bands that were on the CD could, could actually be in Boston for the CD release. So we got invited to do that as well. Very so that cool. was really, really cool. Yeah. And of course, Greg Cox showed up to the CD release yeah, which was which was a super, very cool. And uh, yeah, your your friend Blue did. Uh, you might think, yeah, yeah. And there, there's there's so many so many great bands on that CD. And uh, you know, like I told you earlier, Don and I are probably going to do an album dissection episode about this CD because we love it so much. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just amazing what uh, other bands can can do. To, to change the car songs to their vision and, and do it so well. There's just so many great cuts on here. Oh, yeah. The uh, Damone on there doing Just What I Needed. That is my favorite oh, yeah. cover of Just yeah, What I, I Needed. I love Damone. They're, they're another Boston band. And, um, you yeah, know, I'm sort of friends with uh, people in that band. And, uh, yeah, they did a great version. Uh, that's one of my favorites from the album. The CD was made as a, um, well, tribute to the cars, but also a portion of the money that it made went to, you know, to honor Benjamin Orr's memory. Did you ever meet Ben? Right? Had you ever had any contact I, with him being in Boston? I did. I, I met him t twice. Um, um, I went to a charity softball game that he played in, in Boston. Nice. Um, I don't. I don't think I really met him that time, but I, I watched him play baseball, and that was fun. <laughs> and then I saw him in South Station uh, play a concert. Uh, oh, nice. I guess as Orr, um, which I uh, I actually did get to meet him that time. Um, I, I, like, sort of waited for him backstage, I, and uh, 
there was like a green room and he could see every time the door opened, he could see there was a dude just sort of standing outside. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, eventually he came over to the front, he came over to the uh, door and uh, we had a little chat and he was super sweet to me. And I told him, you know, like I went to Berkeley because of, because of the cars and uh, I'm now a musician and, you know, it's all, it's all due to the cars and he was really sweet about it and That's awesome. uh, I, I i've never met i've met four out of five cars and there's never been a cars member who wasn't incredibly sweet to me so i can't say that about every famous person i've ever met but definitely with the cars i've not had a bad experience hmm. that's awesome who have you not met yet um david robinson mm-hmm. it's just uh he, he's probably the closest uh, in proximity to me but i've never met david oh he's in his uh his art shop. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah I, would, I would love to check that out sometime. He's, uh, he's, I think he just sits behind the counter with his feet up, and he's listening to our podcast. <laughs> and his, yeah, ha- his hand warmers. And his hand warmers. <laughs> <laughs> and his beard comb. Yes, yeah. his beard comb. <laughs> That's what he's doing, man. But, by the way, if, if you just heard a ruckus on my end, yeah. that was um, Kurt Gaber's. Um, awesome, cool night thoughts sign that he made, and it just fell over. Oh, so shoot. thanks for, for screwing up our audio, pal. Way to go! I Kurt. saw that. That's another thing I'm jealous about now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's that's the great thing, Eric, about the about the whole cars fanorama. People are so nice and generous. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's yeah. some. Trust me, there's some cuckoo people out there, but a majority of people are so nice and giving. And it's, I, it's always been that way. Yeah, I've had, and I, you know, I, I've had people send me like entire DVDs of videotaped cars footage that I've never seen before. Wow! Uh, for, for no money, they just send them. Yeah, just mail them to me. Yeah, it's amazing. And you know, I, I said earlier that when uh, when I got divorced, um, and all my car CDs were gone. It was all the people on the frozen fire email page um, that got me all those CDs back. Cause a lot of them were out of print by then, you know, especially the ones that, you know, came out in the, in the eighties and so forth. And it was like, my collection was back because of those people, Wow. you know, Hey, Hey, I can't find Benjamin Orr's, you know, uh, the lace. Oh, I got an extra copy. Boom. You know, That's awesome. just amazing. So from substitution, mass confusion, now we get into the turbocharge area, yes. which, um, Eric, I don't know if you're, um, if, if you're aware of how uh, much Donna and I love this film <laughs> and, and how much we love Dave Jeskow. Um, I'm a total big fan. But how, how did you get involved with this? Um, I, I think, again, this might go back to the MySpace days. Um, where I think David found me as a as, as a car sounding band on MySpace and reached out to me. And I don't know, my memory is pretty hazy about things related to this, but um, <laughs> he, eventually he asked me if I would be interested in you know contributing some cars um, sound alikes and and maybe using some of the cautions material. And I was like, yeah, I have a home studio. I can definitely do that. I'm, you know, very, very familiar with the car's production style, and I, I could probably do a great job. And I don't know, somehow I got the job of, like, scoring all these little pieces of music for the film. And yeah. it was super fun, and it was my first film scoring job. I've had a few more since then, but this was the, uh, I think, my first one. Nice. And, and I thought that a lot of those um, sound alike parts that, that are that are throughout the movie um, the, with the hello again, I originally thought that that was just the hello again from Substitution Mass Confusion by the argument. Oh, but yeah. No, that that was you. I, I found out since then, but you did since you're gone up and down those yeah. ju- just those little parts that play through there. And, uh, you know, really, really cool. Um, and then with the uh, coffee shop girl plays in the beginning, mm-hmm. which um, 
movie magic. It's it's not the cautions. It's not Eric in there. Although Memo's playing drums, which, which I thought he? was funny. Yeah, he's playing drums. I didn't realize okay. that. Yeah. I've met Memo. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Oh, that's cool. I didn't realize. Cool guy. He's drums. Yeah. Um, but the uh, and then they also have listed um, Anne Marie in there, and I'll be darned, I still can't pick out where that song is in in the film. Hmm. I'm, I'm thinking I, I it's like I think it's like during during those parts when um, they have Rick doing all these odd jobs or his his <laughs> car thing or or something something in there where you just have to really listen or hmm. possibly during the Shake It Up. Um, promo party that they have in the movie oh, yeah. won't be playing. i'm not sure i can never i i you know i've watched that movie to death and i've been listening for it and i just can't find it but i know it's in there hmm. so on on the on the song that david wrote how do you do it i think he he mentioned to me that all the is it all the music for that song is you i don't think so um to, to the best of my recollection, I did. Um, he he had someone else working on it because I when I got to it, I was just adding all the background vocals. And, oh, okay. Uh, uh, maybe some other stuff, but it, it, all I remember is the background vocals. Um, I definitely didn't do it start to finish. There was someone else involved. So, so, so the have, lead the lead David. guitar parts. Those were someone else. I I assume so. Yeah, I'm not much of a lead guitar player, so it probably wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> this is going back so long, and you know, there's been some there's there's been some drugs here and there, so <laughs> <laughs> my memory's not <laughs> what it should be. Yeah, <laughs> but definitely the background vocals. Yeah, so it's still very very cool that you're a part of that film and. Um, Hopefully, it'll it'll be able to get to released in some format so the rest of the fanorama can can enjoy. We did a small um, screening for a few people in Cleveland at the Ben Orr Book event, and and everybody loved it. So oh, I, yeah. I I just think it's one of those films that has its its audience, and and that is us. <laughs> right. <laughs> that is us. Um, just, I love that movie. David Jessica had a really great screening at the um, sort of in Times Square um, at the HBO headquarters. Nice. Um, so I got to go to that and it was like the top floor of the HBO headquarters, I guess. And uh, it was a really cool screening. I remember, uh, let's see, Les was there. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that he got the humor of that movie. No, <laughs> no that's. That's a big joke with us. <laughs> it walked out. Yeah, yeah we yeah. understand he uh, yeah he didn't stay for the whole thing. Yeah, I think he was a little miffed about it, but um, <laughs> but I'm glad to hear that other people are enjoying it because it really it really is. I mean, Dave Jesko, if nothing else, he's a huge Cars fan, and he 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 put a lot of love into the movie, you know. Yeah. So um, I thought it was funny, and I I really like that other people think it's funny. Yeah, it's it's just I don't know. It's just one of my favorite things now. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> well, and one of the big things that um, we like about Turbocharge is Phil, the Phil, whole Phil Collins oh, thing. Yes. And you know, it's just it's just genius. And and uh, Eric has has provided with us um, a, a piece of music that he wrote for the movie that didn't make it in. But I, I love it. I kind of wish it was in there. Oh yeah, um, it's but, perfect. Uh, it's the, the title of it being "Evil Phil Collins." <laughs> and Eric, Eric, would you would you like to kind of say what you told me the three pieces of "Evil Phil Collins"? What goes into that? Would you uh, like to tell everybody what uh, what goes into "Evil Phil Collins"? Sure. So. Um, yeah, it was kind of the brainchild of, of David Jessica, but um, yeah, he was he was telling me early on before I saw the cut of the movie that like Phil Collins, of course, with the Live Aid situation was, you know, where where they cut away to Phil Collins during the Cars performance. Mm -hmm. He decided to make that like Phil Collins was actively, you know, 
sabotaging. To sabotage the car through it. <laughs> so he's like, I want it to be somewhat, you know, the Imperial Death March of <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> um, the, the Stormtroopers theme, uh, you know, and and maybe some of uh, In the Air Tonight. <laughs> so, <laughs> and that's the exactly. <laughs> So I added, so I added a little dose of Psycho, the, the, the music from Psycho as well. But it's basically a combination of In the Air Tonight, Psycho, and the Stormtrooper Death March. Yes, and it's awesome, just awesome. So we we wanted to play that that little bit of Evil Phil Collins, yeah, um, for the listeners, and obviously people who've seen Turbocharge will get more of a kick out of this than uh, than uh, other people will. But still, if you think about, you know, Phil Collins gate is a thing <laughs> with Cars fans. So, you know, I think this just kind of fits with that whole Live 8 feeling and, and, and what happened. So, Don, if you can roll that, go right ahead. All right, here we go. So that was Evil Phil Collins. <laughs> Hopefully so that perfect. was cathartic for Cars fans. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I could feel Phil Collins' soul in that in that in that clip. <laughs> He's an evil. Man, evil. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So awesome. <laughs> Love, it. Love it. I have to watch Turbo Charge again tonight. I just have to. <laughs> There's just nothing yeah. around it. Probably will too. Um, so, after Turbocharge, Eric, then then you went on to do your your, your solo stuff, and and your first um, solo uh, album was self titled, just called yep. Eric Barrow. And um, can you tell us anything about that? You know how you came about doing that, or um, yeah, <clears throat> um. I, it, it, it's probably not as car as influenced, but um, I was starting to channel like I was going backwards in time, starting to channel some some of my Beatles influence and yes. you know, like Michael Penn and Amy Mann and John Bryan, uh, you know, like other singer songwriters that I've that that influenced me later and and earlier. So. That that album is sort of a collection of all my influences, and Elvis Costello definitely plays into it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but, uh, yeah. as a musician, I think you can answer this question for me because I'm always kind of leery of bringing stuff up when I'm talking to somebody who's who's written a song, and and if it reminds me of something, and whether or not I should tell them that it reminds me of you know, another artist or influence of another artist and so forth. Yeah, is, 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 is that, is that a cool thing to do to say um, to the musician? I get, you know what? The, I think that, I think the challenge, the struggle is always to try and find your own voice. Like, yes. It's a constant evolution, but you know, like when people hear things, uh, you know, from other artists in your work, if, if it's somebody that you respect, then it's always a compliment. So, that's so it's I a fifty-fifty thing, is what you're saying, yeah? Yeah, but like you bring ultimately, up ultimately, you know, the the yeah. greatest compliment of all time would be if like someone was compared to Eric Barrow someday, yeah, <laughs> and exactly. they'd be like, "Yes, I I had my own voice at some yeah. point." But it's it's really cool that you know the 
that you bring up the Beatles, because when I first heard this album, I was thinking, wow, this is it's very Beatles like in in the fact of, um, you know, l- lyrically and and just the way things are layered. And you know, it, it's hard for me to explain because I'm not a, a music guy. I just know, you know, just on the on the sure. Yeah, just yeah. just just how it affects me. But the the, the other um, artist that it kind of remind me of was Doug Powell. I don't know if you were, how familiar you are with Doug Powell, um, but it just it, but it's it's when those kinds of things happen where you think, wow, this really reminds me of this. It's because it's something that you love already, and then it it brings you into it. Really, like, okay, I love this too. Because of these, you know, similar attributes, whether it be the lyrics or, you know, those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I was definitely when it, when I was working on this record, I was very specifically channeling the production style of the Beatles' Magical Mystery Tour and the White Album, uh, as far as technical production tricks. Um, but that said, I also brought in like a lot of Queen and Sparks. I don't know if you're familiar with. Sparks, oh yeah. But yeah. Um, you know things like that, Badfinger, and you know I was really going backwards in time and trying to channel '70s influences from my childhood. So nice. that's that's kind of where where I'm coming from with that. Well, and, the, and the, I think if when people listen to your to your solo stuff as compared to the cautions i mean it's it's really a lot more i don't want to put a term on it but it's i guess more um maybe easy listening i don't know if that's the right right way to put it but it's it's whereas the you know the cautions is something that gets you pumped up and and um going the the, a a lot of your solo work is things that kind of put you at ease and get you thinking a lot more and um more of a mellow vibe a mellow vibe yeah um you know, I, would feel that, I would definitely feel that way about my first solo record this one i was striving for like a little more energy and a little mm-hmm. more queen vibe but yeah. if, if i don't know what you're hearing but <laughs> that's well, what like, i was going for i'm just the average guy <laughs> <laughs> Well, and for me, you know, with obsolete, especially because I pay attention to words, too. So the music is very pleasant and I enjoy listening to it a lot. But the thing that really hooks me with obsolete is the lyrics and it is the stories that come out and the way you tell them. That's I can't help but focus on that more just for me personally on the obsolete album. I can't help but focus on the lyrics more because they're just so they're so good. They're just so mm-hmm. good. I, I really appreciate that because that lyrics is like my main thing that I'm super obsessed with. So yeah. I really appreciate that. Yeah, you've you've got no problem in in the lyric department whatsoever. Lyrics are <laughs> awesome. Um, and the, the other thing I like about your solo stuff, it really seems like that. I mean, it's a different vocal style, obviously, than than with the cautions. But this really highlights your voice. I mean, you've got mm-hmm. a tremendous voice. Oh, thank Just, you. It's it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Wow. Uh, Especially... Yeah, I, I've I never considered myself like a vocal a vocalist, but I out of necessity I had to be. So I've just practiced a lot, and uh, I'm I'm always a little bit shy about it. But I really appreciate that. <laughs> so we wanted to play something from your from your first solo um, LP. And I, I put out that I, I really like the song To All You Guys. And that's that's one of those songs that really connected with me. Just And I, it probably connects with a lot of people. Um, so we can just you know give that a listen and, and let people uh, uh, listen to your next step um, in music that you took. Okay. All right, here we go. To all you guys of a menacing size Who made me feel invisible with your lies To all you guys, I want you to know I found a way to rise To all you jocks who broke my balls And pushed me down
particularly love love that song i love to all you guys because i grew up i mean it, you said dave right before we played it that it made a connection for you oh it, it made such a connection to me i didn't i was not uh <laughs> i was not highly respected at my school growing up and so you know what it was it was that it was that ta- belly tattoo donna not. Those weren't in when you were in school. <laughs> it's ahead of my time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I just, like, that was one of those things that, not just to the song, but where I, I hope this isn't too personal to say or too weird, because I, I don't mean to be weird, Eric, but where I just felt like I wanted to just squeeze your hand and just, I don't know, I just felt such a connection to you. What is it with you and rock stars in hands, Donna? Oh, stop. <laughs> David Robinson gets accosted. Now you want to cost Eric? I Eric, didn't tell you what, buddy, anybody. if you're in Boston, run. She'll want to hold oh your hands and she'll talk forever how warm they were. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Wow, what a bad rap. <laughs> I've got Huckleberry Taffy. Doesn't that yeah, make up for my weirdness? <laughs> oh, stay away from the Huckleberry Taffy, Eric. She'll, she'll send you some, trust oh. me, and then you'll be addicted. I'll and hook you, it. yeah. I'll hook you with it. Yeah. No, truly, I, I did. I just felt such a personal connection to you yeah. listening to that song. Um, that's just, yeah. I love that song. It's great. I, I totally felt the same way, um, Donna. And it's, it's, it's those kind of connections that you make with a song that kind of connects you with, you know, with the artist and thinking, wow, you know, they, they felt the same way. And Mm -hmm. and they get me, they get me. Yeah. 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 With, with that song in particular, you know, it's, it's very autobiographical. Um, I, you know, in for, for a certain period of my like grade school, junior high period, I, I, there was definitely some bullying going on in my life. And, Mm -hmm. um, so it's definitely channeling that. Um, but I've, I've received so many like really nice emails from people who have been through similar experiences and, and got something out of that song. And that's, that's like, you can't ask for much more as a songwriter to like Mm -hmm. have people, you know, write, take the time to write you to, to say like that song meant a lot to me. Yeah. Uh, I was going through a similar bullying experience. Well, yeah. As a school teacher, Eric, I can tell you. I'm I'm talking to to younger Eric Barrow now. That okay. The reason why those kids were that way is because they were jealous because you were such a freaking cool kid. That's all there is to it. <laughs> I mean that's that's what it comes down to. I mean it's it's you know pe- people trying to make their light burn brighter by you know putting yours out. That's what it's always about. You know. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I've actually I've actually gone to schools and uh, talked to played that song and talked about it with uh, middle school kids. And uh, that that was a super rewarding experience for me. Wow, fantastic. Eric, that is so awesome. 
I love okay. that you do that or did that. Gosh, that's cool. really cool. That's really Thank cool. You. And one of the other things I love about it is because it's not, um, because it is an anti-bullying type of thing, but it's not like a screw you people. It's just like a, you know what I mean? It's it's such a gentle, honest reflection. Yeah, it it, it definitely like delves into the, you know, it's sort of like a psychological profile. Like yeah, maybe, it's you like a... maybe you weren't man enough for dad. Right. You know, that sort of thing. Um, and uh, at the end, the, the, the end of oh, it is, you I know, love it. the end of it was a true story. I had I had a, a, a bully in sixth grade who um, bullied me all year. And uh, at the end of the year, they the teacher made him sit next to me it, it, like he moved desks so that this kid was ne- like directly next to me. Mm. And bullying wasn't fun for him after he was like watching me a foot away from him uh like he would make fun of me and then he would see like how how sad i was <laughs> and so yeah. so he he turned he turned it around and started like making me laugh instead of like making me the butt of all the jokes and mm-hmm. at the end of the year like he sort of befriended me and it turned everything around so wow i tried to make that part of the song that's awesome yeah. Once again, teacher Dave says, more than likely, bullies just just need a friend. Yeah, that's yeah. that's all they need. You know, you don't know what's going on in their home life and those kind of things. And and uh, you know, it's they just they just want somebody to to like them, like everybody else is being liked. Yep, yeah. yeah. it's it's an overcompensation for lack of approval in their lives usually. Yeah, a lot of yeah. times. Yeah, that's a great song, Eric. Thank you. So now, so many years later, coming up April 2nd, when it's uh, going to be released, you have your new CD, Obsolete. And we were um, lucky enough to be able to to hear this album before it gets released. And I absolutely love it. I just love it. Um, we could just go go through each song and I could I could tell you something you know, uh, about each one that, that, uh, that I love. Um, first of all, the, the keys, um, in there, I just, I love, love that to death. But the, the main thing that makes me think about with, with this album is it's so stimulating auditorily, mm-hmm. uh, you know, got the headphones on and it's just like, wow, <laughs> everything's coming from, you know, different places. And I just, I just love that kind of stuff. I do too, and I like that each each different thing is distinctive. It's not it doesn't just all mush together, you and and so you'll be listening along, and all of a sudden a new sound will pop in, or he'll he'll change gears. Eric, he'll change gears, um, particularly uh, where it's the it's nothing to see. It's that's the song, nothing to yeah. see. Oh, that's, it has the yeah, that's good album. yes, that's the cut. yes. That with the um, just has different sounds in it and, and different things that come in. And then at the end, of course, you have the emergency call. Yes. Um, audio, which was, again, just a surprise and another tasty part of the song that's not all mushed in with everything else. You get to experience it and just really great, really clever. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, I got the idea for that from uh, the Beatles, uh, I think it was Magical Mystery Tour, where they just sort of tune in BBC radio and they spin the dial and they just record whatever was happening on the radio. Awesome. I think it's, I think it's for uh, I Am the Eggman. And um, I just thought that was a great idea. So that that, that audio is actually actual real, um, you know, is- real audio from a, a, a car crash. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> wow. Kind of dark, but it, it fit in with the song. So, Well, yeah, it completely. This whole song is just a great metaphor for the the crash of the relationship. And so it's just perfect. Awesome. I'm glad you got that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you told me how you did that, because when things like that are, are in songs, I always wonder, okay, did they recreate that? Is that Eric's voice? You know, doing that or whatever. Oh, and so yeah. it's really cool to know that. Yeah, and that's the real deal. For better wow. Yeah. And so there you have it, folks. Um, scanner chatter, non-copyrighted. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I 
it's a public record. Yeah, like you said, Dave, it's just you put the headphones on. It's great music to listen to. And I did think that's one of the things I thought you mentioned, the uh, influence of Elvis Costello. I definitely feel like you have an Elvis Costello vibe going on. I do get that with my singing a lot mm-hmm. uh, for, for whatever reason. And it's always an extreme compliment because I, I, I don't feel I have nearly the singing voice of Elvis Costello. But I, I guess I have the, the timber enough that, um, you know, people pick up on that. Oh, so yeah. I'm, I'm always happy to hear that. But Now, are, are, are the backing vocals on this album you as well? Yeah, um, I think almost all of them are, but I, uh, some of them are from my um, piano player in my band, Carlene Barus. Um, she she sang some of the background vocals, but mostly it's mostly it's me. I think all the male vocals you hear are me. Yeah, so that in, in that really high range, um, I, I I enjoy that. I I like it a lot. Yeah. Well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad. It's like, it's like, man, I am such a layman when it comes to stuff. It's like, you know that song, Eric? I, it was really good. You're like Chris Farley I, when he's I, I liked it. when he's interviewing Paul McCartney on Saturday Night Live. It was awesome. <laughs> stupid, stupid, stupid. Now, hey, you know, Donna's the brains of the outfit, Eric. That's all I can no, tell you. No, 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 no. But I think Donna and I look. And, and music a lot of different ways. I think I'm more of a person. Um, when I listen to music, how it makes me, you know, feel j- just listening to it. And, and Donna I re- really dives more into the lyrics mm-hmm. and gets a lot of those behind the scenes hidden messages that that, that the lyrics get. But you know, be, and it's because I often don't don't look at lyrics. You know, now in this new digital age, it's not like, you know, when we're buying albums and sitting there with the liner notes, um, you know, so Isn't God, that sad. Yeah. yeah. God, I mean, God I... bless you for including the lyrics, <laughs> yes. um, you know, with with this uh, advanced copy, because that's that's how I listened to it was pulling up those lyrics and and going right along with it. Oh, I'm so happy there are still people like you that do that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, oh, and I, cool. when I first listened to it, I was, you know, doing, because I got it last night, and so I was listening to it this morning, and I was actually doing housework and stuff, but I am such a lyric person, and I was like, I got to go, I got to stop what I'm doing and go find those lyrics. What did he say? Did he think, he, did he say what I think he said? Particularly one song <laughs> that I, <laughs> I confess I only listened to once. <laughs> oh, okay. anyway. and, and what song is that, Eric? It's, this album gets weird at a certain point, so yeah, just, uh, I, I don't know. You have an interesting it's, relationship with your kitty let's, cat. Let's oh, just, yeah. <laughs> let's just say the song, My Pussy Puss, made me giggle like a preteen. <laughs> and I loved it. I'm sitting there listening, you know, with my with my uh, laptop, my headphones on. I'm next to my wife, and she's like, what are you, you know, what are you laughing at? I'm, I'm listening to a song. <laughs> it's awesome. I'll just say this: it's about a cat and a mouse. Mm-hmm. Cat and a mouse. Mine's out of the gutter. Yeah, it's just a cat and a mouse. <laughs> okay. That's all it's about. Uh, but it's just—I mean, it's ingenious. That's that's the way I look at it. And just it just—it's it, a funny song, you know. Well, thank what, you. I... What can you say? But, and 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 the way you you're rolling, rolling your tongue on certain. <laughs> yes. Lyrics, I love it. I just love it. <laughs> oh, good. That is, that is the kind of song I want in my head as I'm walking down the hallway at school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. From bullying to this song. Yeah, but I, uh, Eric, I confess, I when I messaged Donna, I said, "Hey, you know, have have you gotten the uh, the the promo copy yet?" And she had, and I go, "Well, there's going to be one song on there that's going to make you blush." <laughs> That's how Donna is. I know, and you were, (laughs) yeah. And you said, (laughs) you said, I wish I could see your face when you listened to it. And I was like, oh boy, oh no, what's going to (laughs) happen? You know what? My my dream thing is to um, go to Boston in June, um, have Donna pick me up in her in her little rental car, plug that in, and play my pussy puss. Oh my god. 
God. With that. That, is, that is not going to happen. It sure is. Come on. Oh, we can support our friend Eric. And oh, I'll su- yes, I'll support Eric. My, his- my, <laughs> my bad time for me to put this put a song with this title out. <laughs> but my, my intentions were fairly pure. Fairly. <laughs> fairly pure. Since we know how much attention you pay to your lyrics, Eric, we're not going to buy your story that it's about a mouse and some and your kitty. So. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Well, you know, it kind of reminds me of when when the, the Cars put out "Tonight She Comes." Okay. Yeah. Yes. yes. I was yes. in college, and my girlfriend was like, oh, I cannot believe that they put that song out. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Oh, tonight she comes. And I go, it isn't, that isn't what they mean. And then I go years and years, and then I see some uh, interview with Elliot Easton talking about, oh, yeah, that's, that's what it's about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, Holy crap, she was right. <laughs> wow. Uh, okay. Hey, yeah. why not? Well, it was a, it's a fun song. It is I'm a sure. fun song. It's awesome. <laughs> uh, the the oh, song "New Lifestyle," Eric, great. love this song. Yeah, and it's such a testament to relationships and and how they move along. And um, I can't remember the exact line, but um, about um, not not being my lover, but still being my friend. I just want my lover back mm-hmm. while keeping my best friend. My friend, yes. I love that line, too. Yes, yes. <sighs> yes. This is probably oh, my favorite song on the album. Now, Eric, what are you doing? Oh, awesome. <laughs> are you cooking? Eric, what are, you, are you rearranging <laughs> your pantry, Eric? <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing? <laughs> are you dropping stuff, or is I'm that sorry, you? Am I, am I making noise? <laughs> <laughs> yes. See, this is what we want on our podcast. <laughs> this is this is what makes us different than the other podcasts. That's right. We don't care what's going on in the background. People like, want to hear that stuff, like Donna's typing. Yes, my cat. Her, kid, her kid's coming up and saying, Mom, Mom, can I have that last piece of banana bread? Stuff like that. <laughs> One time I was washing dishes in the background. Things. Yeah, I was just washing dishes. Who knows? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I just had to tease you. No, I do. I think New Lifestyle, I think that's my favorite song on the whole album. I, it's so good. I, and it, and again, oh, just like you said, great. Dave, you just make these connections. You just, I just felt like I could really connect to this one. Is, is, um, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, mm-hmm. the that that particular song is the, the very last thing I tossed off for the, for the album, like mm-hmm. as a last minute sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And with the, with the last album, the the song uh, on holiday was the song that I tossed off at the last minute, and that ended up being like the sit the the single of my last album. Mm, wow! So it seems it seems I I really excel at writing things like on extremely short notice, <laughs> <laughs> and that that becomes the thing that people like because. Um, so yeah, yeah. I, I literally like I spent almost five years working on the 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 previous five tracks, and then the sixth one came together in like six hours, and wow. that's the one you like. Wow! <laughs> so, wow. Amazing. That's the way it goes. Yeah, yeah. I really so, love it. As as a musician and 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 you know a producer of music, how do you decide? What aspects of the song are going in to what channel? Is that something you just kind of play around with as you listen to it? Or is it something that as you're writing the song that you're thinking, you know, that this this instrument will be in in the left channel and my vocals will be over here and and those kinds of, you know? Oh, interesting. Um, In the case of this record, since everything is panned either left or right or dead center, uh-huh. Um, I I kind of left that up to my uh, recording engineer Ducky Carlisle, who's who's by the way on his third Grammy. Wow! He, um, he's won three Grammys now. Congrats! Um, he's produced Nora Jones, and he's done a bunch of Buddy Guy records, which is oh, which yeah. is the thing that keeps uh, getting him Grammys. 
but um, he's an amazing guy. Uh, he's been in, in the business for, I don't know, decades, you know, 30, 30 years or so. Um, and I just sort of gave it to him. And I, he's a huge, huge Beatles nut. So I said, you know, this is this is like Magical Mystery Tour, White Album, go for it. And I just like let him make all the decisions about what gets panned where. Nice. So I didn't really have much to do with that at all. I just sort of gave it to him. I had my own ideas, but I didn't tell him what they were. So I just <laughs> let him mix it. <laughs> Very cool. So when it comes to your to the actual physical CD, and you know I had talked to you before about how much I love. Um, the the cover art and the inside art and so forth is that something that that you do yourself or have did other people have a hand? Yeah, in? Um, my my day job is basically um, I I do I'm self employed as a website designer and graphic designer, and I do some video editing work. So it's all v- sort of visual stuff that I do for my day job. So I just I just always end up laying out all the record covers. I think. I don't think I've ever made an album where I didn't like handle the artwork myself. I'm, Fantastic. I'm sort of the David Robinson of the band. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So, so that original Cautions EP um, cover, that's that's all you right there. Yeah, I illustrated yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, I love I love that album cover. Oh, and thanks. and of course with with uh, proceed with the caution uh, the cautions that you, you can never go wrong with a silhouette. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just love the fact that on the inside of that CD, you know, is the band and then you see what's behind the silhouette. Right. So, my my father is actually uh, a really a really great um, commercial photographer. So that's sort of where I got started. And in, in the visual arts was like studying, you know, what my dad was up to. And so he he was both the photographer for the band and um, and also an inspiration for, you know, getting into the graphic arts in the, in the first place. Nice. Wow. Very yep. cool. Although I will say on the on that particular CD, I hope you guys never played on stage that close together because you'd just be bumping into each other. <laughs> we've, we've definitely played on some stages. That we're about <laughs> as, Small. As that. <laughs> yeah. Snug. It definitely <laughs> feels like that <laughs> all right so, so donna we're going to play a cut from obsolete awesome can i'll I give you a choice donna we okay. can play the title track obsolete or my pussy puss oh <laughs> obsolete <laughs> obsolete <laughs> <laughs> you are oh donna wow well that just means that people are going to have to buy obsolete to find out uh, the great uh, song like Pussy Puss. Yes, to see what and is. and the one that we love so much, New Lifestyle. Yes, um, the whole thing is great. But yeah, let's let's play the title track from Obsolete because I absolutely love this song as well. Okay, here we go. To the girl who's got everything, I like to think that I could do anything that you ask. Pay no mind to my rust.
Okay, so that was Obsolete, the title track from uh, Eric's new album, Obsolete, coming out April 2nd. And you can actually pre-order that now at ericbarrow.com. And that's, well, of course, Eric, E-R-I-C. But Barrow is spelled B-A-R-A-O. And com is spelled C-O-M, in case you don't know how <laughs> com is spelled. But uh, that's how I ordered my copy. Went to ericbarrow.com and, and pre-ordered. And also have shirts. I have the shirt. Nice. Um, you can get it on thumb drive, which is very cool. A keyboard thumb drive. That's really cool. Yeah. And what other merchandise do you have on there, Eric? Um, I think you've pretty well covered it. CDs, thumb drive, T-shirt, which, by the way, I haven't even ordered my own T-shirt yet. Cause Dude, I'm, I'm the first. To... I think I was the first to order a T-shirt, just saying. <laughs> awesome. I, I look forward I was... to getting mine soon. Yeah. Can I ask you another question really quick? Sure. The um, Dave, are you okay with that? Um, <laughs> just kidding. Yes. <laughs> just teasing. <laughs> just teasing. Um, see, when you and I talked a few months ago, you mentioned um, noodling around with Greg a little bit and hoping to get to work with him on one of your solo projects. Was that this album or was that your first album? Yeah, that was that was this album. Um, yeah. Do you want to talk um, about that I, at all? I was in, Sure. I was in, I was in talks with Greg to uh, to play a little keyboards on this record. Unfortunately, you know, um, his schedule became extremely busy. Um, he was both, you know, touring with Todd Rundgren and also the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame thing happened in the meantime. So it it, it wasn't it wasn't able to happen uh, uh, where I could get him on this record. But, you know, um I love Greg, and I hope uh, you know maybe someday we'll get to do something in, on a future on a future record or something. But uh, <clears throat> I was really I was really happy that he he was like really enthusiastic about the the demos he, that he heard from my record, and um, you got that to meant spend the some, world to me. You got to spend some time with him, didn't you? Playing is it okay for me to ask about that? Um, yeah, I actually, uh, met with him and, um, yeah, I got to, I got to hang out with him for an afternoon and it was one of the best days of my life because obviously, you know, everything, everything in my career revolves around being influenced by the cars and, and in particular Greg, you know, cause I was a keyboard player. So, mm-hmm. you know, uh, it's, it's for me, it's all about Rick and, and, and Greg, um, Nice. As far as my early influences, uh, obviously I love LA Easton solos, and you know everybody in the band brings their own thing. But, but for me personally, like being a keyboard player, I I was like laser focused on everything that Greg did. Yeah. So yeah. it was a it was a huge compliment to me that he was like really into the Beatles aspect of it, and um, yeah, it was it was super cool. So did he so, come into the I studio with you? Uh, no, he um, like we 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 met privately and um, and talked about possible plans, but it just it just you know wasn't in the cards for this album. Yeah, that's so awesome. Yeah, it was. So with with you playing keys, Eric, like you know, for example, with the Cautions, Coffee Shop Girl. I mean, you're obviously playing guitar. But also the the synth synth part in there, you're playing as well on stage. Yeah, you're doing like I double would, duty. Right, I would play guitar and keyboards in the same song. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Which was, you know, which is, you know, all the more reason I'm such a fan of like, you know, things like In Touch with Your World because that's where I learned to, you know, divvy up my time and like figure out how to play more than one instrument in one song. Wow. And, uh, you know, I'm, you know, Getty Lee of Rush does it as well. But, I was just thinking of um, him. Yeah, I was thinking, you're yeah. like Getty Lee. But I have a definite affinity for people who can do that. So um, it, it it becomes very, uh, it's, it's quite a chore to do. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, you don't want to do it for every song because it becomes very stressful. <laughs> but um, it's really cool when you can, like, create a spectacle out of it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, I, I mean, in, in a lot of ways, I'll, I mean, at least for people like me, it's hard to sing and play an instrument at the same time, much less two instruments and in singing. Mm-hmm. Um, right. I'm so, always yeah. trying to do less. <laughs> I'm always trying to <laughs> figure out a way to do less well, and, <laughs> and have you, it still be interesting. If you stick with the ratchet, you know, just playing the ratchet. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you right. go. <laughs> I need to become a ratchet virtuoso. There you go. That's what I need to do. <laughs> sure enough. <laughs> well, as we said, you can you can pick up obsolete from uh, ericbarrow.com. And then, you know, if you're interested in um, the cautions and um, well, and, and Eric's other solo LP, can all those be you have links to all those on ericbarrow.com, do you not? I if they do. Um, yeah, I mean, as far as the cautions and my two solo albums, yeah, I am, I am, I am ready to sell copies of any of those things. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and frankly, I could I could use the sales. Yeah. Well, <laughs> hopefully we'll get to. Well, I've got one sale for you because I'm buying a copy of that EP on CD. Because awesome, I'm going for it. So. Um, Hey, any closing remarks, Donna, before we uh, go on on to the Midnight Scroll? Well, I do just have one more little subject I wanted to explore, if Eric doesn't sure. mind. Sure. <laughs> I think that that everyone would love to hear your how you got your furniture. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm so, always into the stories. Yeah, so, I've yeah. got questions about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... so. So yeah, starting starting with me as a teenager, I became a, a big cars collector of anything I could get my hands on cars related. But by the time I got to college, um, I was living in Boston, and um, one day I happened to walk into a consignment shop uh, on Boylston Street, which is no longer there, and uh, this guy had a black and white polka dot suit that I was very interested in. It was very new wave and it was the, it was priced right. And I thought, well, this, this looks like something Rick Ocasek would wear. So I'm going to, I'm going to take a chance and buy this. When I got up to the counter, he said, Oh yeah, this belonged to Rick Ocasek. Wow. (laughs) And I was like, what do you, how, how could that be? (laughs) <laughs> and he was like, yeah, um, yeah, his ex-wife uh, comes in here from time to time and um, <laughs> sells some of his stuff. <laughs> and that, so I immediately bought the suit, which I believe might be the suit from the Panorama video. I'm not 100% sure on that, but it looks a lot like the, the suit from the Panorama video. Oh. So it could be a similar one, but it is definitely custom made. There's no tags on it. It's 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 like completely custom made. So I so I asked this gentleman, uh, what what else do you have from <laughs> from the estate of Rick Ocasek? And uh, he pulled out some Polaroids of Rick Ocasek's furniture set uh, from from his ex-wife, so, Suzanne. So uh, he put me in touch with her. And um, next thing you know, I'm buying his uh, his entire living room furniture set, <laughs> <laughs> which was uh, basically two couches and an end table that were all black lacquer and mirror and sort of Miami Vice style fabric, mm-hmm. uh, gray with white polka dots. And um, so, yeah, uh, that's what I have in my living room now. And wow. it's a it's a sort of a mini rock and roll hall of fame, <laughs> and and I actually got to go to his house in uh, his his previous house in Boston, and uh, I met his met his son, and uh, it was quite quite the experience. Wow! And did you have to like pull up an old pickup truck and have him load the stuff in the back of the truck and <laughs> strap it in for you? <laughs> Um, I had my dad <laughs> with a minivan, <laughs> close <Love> enough. <laughs> that is so cool. And so if, if I did that, like the first thing I would do is like reach between the cushions to see if I could find change. <laughs> yes. uh, maybe, maybe like yeah. a Cheerio or something. Maybe <laughs> Rick was snacking popcorn or something. 
<laughs> nothing like that, Eric. You didn't find anything like that. <laughs> no, nothing, nothing particularly exciting. No. Okay, did you get? Okay, here's what I would have done. I would have gotten on the floor and laid under the table. Like, was there anything written underneath? Secret messages, bubble no, gum, the, chewed bubble gum wasn't. stuck there? I'd no? say the most. I'd say the most exciting part of the story is that I found a picture of Rick sitting on that couch. Oh, um, awesome. It was in his, uh, when he was like living, I think at the top of the Prudential building, like in Boston. Okay. Um, there, he had a, like an apartment that was pretty, pretty close to the top of the Prudential building, I believe. And I, I have a picture of him sitting on the couch that I own. <laughs> So, like, there's there's le- legit proof that my couch is his. <laughs> wow. Did you put that in a little uh, frame? No, I don't. I never printed it out, but I have it, like, somewhere on my computer. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Very cool. Very yeah. cool. So that's that's the extent to which I'm a fan, is that, you know, I've I've, I've spent, like, over $1,000 on on furniture owned by <laughs> Rick Kasich. <laughs> Did you do you ever wear the suit? I do. Uh, not often. It sort of fits me. I'm like just tall enough to pull it off, but like not quite as tall. I'm not nearly as tall as Rick, but it doesn't look ridiculous on me. <laughs> but um, I, 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 I will wear it like once every couple of years. Will you wear it to the book event? No, hey, would you I let will. Donna wear it to the book event? That's what I will I say. For you, if you, if that's what you want me to do, I will absolutely wear it to the book event. Yeah, so we can touch it. Uh, just okay. so we, I just want to touch it. That's all. I'm not sure. being weird. <laughs> you, Donna, you'll do something like, "Oh, Eric, I'm really cold. Can I borrow your jacket for tonight?" <laughs> she'll, she'll play that off on you. Eric. Well, not as I'm holding his hand, you know, trying to yeah. squeeze in his hand. Hi, Eric. He he he. <laughs> sure looks snuggly in that suit, Eric. <laughs> That's a fantastic story. I love it. <laughs> there was another guy who was in the Fanorama who bought, I think, a couple of chairs or something like that. From Rick, so Rick's Rick's into selling his furniture. That's for sure. Okay. At least his wow. ex-wife is. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we should all keep in touch with each other, just well, in case. Well, I mean, <laughs> oh. the guy's selling his house. He's got to have some furniture he wants to get rid of. We need to get on that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I wonder if it, if he's selling it furnished or not. Does it include all that oh. stuff that's in those pictures? It might. Huh. Well, and it's got a, it's got the basement studio too, so. Right, right. Oh, Eric, you better get on that. Get that equipment. Maybe we can yeah. pool our pool our money. And we can the three of us can buy it, and it'd be our vacation home. We could take turns. No, we'll just okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just go go yeah go find me. <laughs> there you go. Kickstarter. Yeah, <laughs> Kickstarter. <laughs> Rickstarter. Ooh, yeah, Rick very starter. nice. Rickstarter. We'll Boom. Yeah, and then we can rent it out. You know, like a condo, like weeks at a time. You know, who has week forty two? You're up. You get to send me your check. You can stay there. Hey, there we go. I know. That'll about work. To retire. Awesome. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, hey, Eric, we, we really, really, really appreciate you being on our, our little podcast and, and sharing all these insights into your music and to Rick Ocasek's furniture. <laughs> uh, I mean, we can't thank you enough. Yeah. It was my pleasure talking to you, both of you. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you decided to do this, and I'm really looking forward to meeting you in Boston. Great. I'll, I will be there, I'm, I promise. And hopefully <laughs> I'll be there, too. Hopefully. <laughs> that would be amazing. Well, I it's, guess I'll meet you, too, then. It's still up in the air, and, <laughs> and, and if I'm there, I will not hold your hand, dude. I promise. <laughs> and don't fight okay. with me over the jacket, either. Uh, well, I may <laughs> want to try the jacket on. I'm just saying that. <laughs> All right, so um, we'll uh, we're just going to go on to the midnight scroll, Donna. All right, and uh, and let Eric go, unless you want to listen to the midnight scroll, Eric. It's up I'll to listen. you. I'll listen. Why not? Oh. I've been here this long. Awesome. Fantastic. All right, <laughs> I'm going to roll that scroll music. All right, roll that scroll music. All right, so our first Midnight Scroll, and which, by the way, people, we appreciate you when you um, 
send us some mail to our Gmail account. And also, we're reading comments that people have left on SoundCloud or iTunes. Okay, our first email is from Georgina. It says, hi, guys. I don't have Shibadoo playing in the background, so this may go long. I've recently rediscovered the cars and am loving the podcast. I just finished listening to the one from November 2018 about their debut album and loved it so much I was moved to write. I had the album when it first came out when I recently started listening to it again. Or, and I recently started listening to it again. I was newly amazed at how good it is in every respect. So loved hearing your guys' takes on it and appreciation of it. Donna expressed surprise that just what I needed only made it to 27 on the charts. I wanted to say that back then, I remember there being a difference between album artists and single artists. I never even realized that the cars put out singles. We just bought the albums. Hmm. By the way, I think I had a religious experience when the track of All Mixed Up with just Ben's vocals and the guitar was played. Yeah, that is very cool. <laughs> Eric, yes. have, you, uh, have you heard that? I have, you know, yes. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Incredible. amazing. incredible. Um, I'm looking forward to listening to more back episodes and, of course, future episodes. I already contacted Donna on Facebook. <laughs> She says, I'm Claudine. Yes, okay. yes. And we'll be checking out all the sites and blogs and Twitter feeds. <laughs> awesome. And P.S., I'm going to be going to ericbarrow.com and picking up that new album, Obsolete. Is that what she said, really? No, I just added that in there because I'm going to plug Eric. Aww. <laughs> <Okay. Aww. laughs> that was very nice of her to write in. Thanks, Georgine slash yeah. Claudine. <laughs> All right, so your turn, Donna. Okay, well, I have a comment from um, Lando on our SoundCloud uh, recording of the Brett Bassel episode, episode 48. Hey, Lando. Can't go wrong with a name like Lando. <laughs> right. I was originally going to read this as Lando Calrissian, but I couldn't, I couldn't get the voice down. So, you know, <laughs> oh. all I could get was, what have we here? And that was it. <laughs> what the heck? Are you not familiar with Lando oh, Calrissian? Oh, yes, I am familiar. But, you know, i have it's been a long time since I've seen you're not it. As big, you're not as big a Star Wars geek as I am. But. I'm not. I'm not. You know I'm not. Um, okay, so this says, uh, this is someone who has spent a lot of time with Greg Hawks on a turntable, and it shows. Great find for me. I came over from the Judith Orr episode, was hooked from the opening skit, and what a good interview. <laughs> oh, fantastic. <laughs> Thanks, Lando. Speaking of that Judith Orr episode, by the way, we have had so many comments on there. People were loving that episode, um, just saying what a great storyteller she was. Everybody's hoping for a part two. So that was awesome. Ah. Yeah. All right. So our last one comes from Mr. Brett Bassel, our, our super fan and, yeah. and indie artist. Um, hi, D&D. I wonder which one's the first D, Donna. What do you think? Donna. You think it's Donna and Dave? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm his favorite. All right. <laughs> what a fun and insightful interview with Judith. I've enjoyed this episode and laughed till and laughed until tears. We've learned so much from the polka shirt history to Ben and his dog not liking cookies. <laughs> Judith, I really hope you do come back for part two. Yeah. Well, there you go, Donna. People enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, that's very awesome. I wanted to. I'm going to check really quick and see how many um, listens Brett's episode has. Um, and I don't mean to make this sound like a competition, um, but I know Brett's episode was so popular, and, um, uh, and Judith's also was. Judith Judith's has a little over 850 views, and Brett's over a thousand. Let's see. Wow. Yeah, a thousand thirty-two views for Brett at this point. Yeah. Eric, we call that the power of or. Anytime, <laughs> anytime we have anything to do with Benjamin or, we get the most listens. Oh, that that that, that makes a lot of sense to me. Our next <laughs> episode is going to be Benjamin Orr's shoes, and I guarantee <laughs> I get like a thousand listens. Yep. <laughs> well, if we just mention that this Eric, you know, we'll have promote Eric's, and then we'll just say, he tells a story about Benjamin Orr. That thing's going to skyrocket. <laughs> <laughs> Through the rug. Hey, yeah. 
In this episode, Eric just stands outside a doorway and stares at Benjamin Moore. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Thousand. There we go. Fantastic. That's good All right. Well, folks, we had a fantastic episode. We hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we will see you on the uh, next podcast. Are we going to play out with one of Eric's songs? Ooh. What are we going to play out with? What can we play out with? Eric, what do you suggest, buddy? Well, <laughs> based on past uh, conversations, I, I think you should go out on Pussy Puss. Oh, I, I what? Think so too. what? I think so, too. <laughs> I think so, too. Thank you. Thank oh, you. Oh, my goodness. You're welcome. All right. <laughs> well, it's a toss-up between Pussy Puss and New Lifestyle. But yeah, I think you, can, you, can, you can go with New Lifestyle if you want. You know, I I gotta say that nothing to see has a a, a guitar. I every time I uh, have a band, I I look for a, a guitar player who can play like L.A. Easton, mm-hmm. and nothing to see has the better L.A. Easton style solo. Awesome, okay. that's the decision so maker go. right there. Yep. All right, so we we had a great episode. We thank everyone for listening once again. We thank uh, Eric Barrow for for joining us. Um, mm-hmm. Donna, let's take it out with. The song Nothing to See from Eric's upcoming uh, album, Obsolete. Awesome. Thanks, everybody.
Thank you for listening to Night Thoughts, the Cars podcast. Wherever you found us, iTunes, SoundCloud, or YouTube, make sure to subscribe and leave a review. Send us an email for the Midnight Scroll at nightthoughtspodcast at gmail.com. As always, Night Thoughts reserves the right to edit or not read an email on the air. You can follow us on Twitter at the Cars Podcast. Grab yourself a podcast t-shirt at tpublic.com backslash user backslash night thoughts. All the cool kids are wearing them. Oh, and finally, search for The Cars Night Thoughts on Facebook and join our group page. P.S. I am totally Team Rick.